Now, last year saw the fastest annual rise in the concentration of carbon dioxide in the Earth's atmosphere. That's according to data collected and uh, analysis from a research station in Hawaii. The study from the UK's Met Office has warned that CO2 at current levels are incompatible with the target of keeping global temperatures below 1.5 degrees. Concentrations of CO2 are now 50% higher than before humans started burning large amounts of fossil fuels. Last year was the hottest on record, with global temperatures 1.6 degrees above pre-industrial levels. Let's speak now to Professor of Earth System Science at Stanford University and also Chair of the Global Carbon Project, Rob Jackson. Uh, Mr. Jackson, hello. Welcome to the program. How worried should well, we be? For me. How worried should we be? What do those figures mean? Well, we should be very worried. This is a much larger increase in atmospheric carbon dioxide than we're used to. Um, we're breaching uh, safe temperature levels uh, well past them. And, um, and I think the most troubling thing about the increase this year is that it's not caused primarily by a surge in fossil fuel emissions. We estimate fossil fuel emissions are up about 1% last year in 2024. But normally the Earth's lands take up about one third of, of, of uh, fossil carbon pollution uh, through tree growth and other things. And the Earth is starting to fight back. Um, the El Nino last year meant thousands of additional fires in the Amazon, record droughts in the Amazon and elsewhere. Plants are not growing as fast and um, we're seeing forest death in places. So the Earth is, is um, starting to uh, rebel, if you will, and, um, and that's deeply troubling. Uh, you say the Earth is fighting back. I mean, the Earth's just going get to get on with things, isn't it? It's us that's going to, to suffer. It's going to correct itself somehow. Um, this figure um, of uh, 1.6 degrees, uh, you know, I think it's, it's accepted now, isn't it, that we're going to be heading above 2.5. That is the most realistic figure of uh, a temperature rise that uh, we'll be able to attain. Is, is that the agreed level? Well, I hope not. Certainly we are heading uh, towards that now. We're not um, slowing down at 1.5. We, you know, a couple decades ago, it would have been inconceivable that we would have so casually and cavalierly blown by the 1.5 C threshold where we are now, but we did. And we may do the same for 2.0 and head above 2.5, which is a mm. deeply troubling world with sea level rise, ice melt and extreme weather. We do not want to go there, but we're we just seem to be sort of whistling down the street, ignoring what's happening around us. OK, so, so in terms of what is happening, why are we seeing this, this fastest rate of carbon dioxide uh, entering the Earth's atmosphere? I mean, we, we've got the COPs, we've got the statements, we've got the increase in renewable um, energy. Why are we still burning more fossil fuels? And, and where? Where is this concentrated? Well, we're burning more fossil fuels in almost all regions of the Earth. Europe is the, the primary region, really the only region where fossil fuel emissions have actually decreased. So, so thank you for, for all of your efforts. But elsewhere, um, we're burning more. Uh, one thing we're doing around the world is producing more and more energy. So we're building uh, wind turbines and, and solar panels. But because there's so much extra demand for energy, that renewable infrastructure does not mean that we're taking fossil plants like natural gas and in some places coal offline and we need to take fossil plants offline and replace them with clean energy are we going to do that do you think do you think it's attainable because it, it looks as if uh, man's development and what needs to be done to protect the earth i mean they, they don't correspond at all i mean one of the latest concerns is that the growth of ai and the energy needed of course to cool those, those huge um, sources and, and, uh, and the, the power that's needed to generate and, and all the processing, the energy that's needed there, where is this energy going to come from? Fossil fuel, isn't it? Uh, to some extent, there's a discussion here in the United States about extending the lifetimes of coal plants that were scheduled to be taken offline in the next few years because of so much extra demand for for energy, partly coming from data centers and AI and things like that. We have an insatiable appetite for energy, and that appetite means we need renewables and nuclear, and we're still burning fossil fuels instead of um, reducing emissions. Okay.
Professor Rob Jackson. I was about to get on to nu uh, nuclear there, but I've run out of time. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>